Okay, hello. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about using the spline editor and the line tool. And in particular, we're going to look at a little bit of spline modeling. We're going to use the lathe modifier and have a look through this. Okay, so excuse me. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the line tool today. Okay, so up at the top, we're going across from primitives. We're going to splines. We're going to use the line tool. And in front viewport, we're just going to click and let go of my mouse. Um, okay, so I've got my hand off my mouse at the moment. I'm just moving the mouse itself, I'm not clicking or anything, and that is asking me where I want to put the other point down. Now, if I hold the shift key down while dragging, it asks me if I want to make a straight edge. At this moment in time, I'm making a bendy corner, okay? So I've got these options here. I've got the bezier, so you can see I'm making myself nice and straight. That's holding the shift key down. If I click and drag, so I'm clicking and I'm holding on, can make this sort of bezier, this rounded corner, and it's going to want to round off. So I'm clicking and dragging. Now, one of the most common mistakes people make when trying to use the line tool is they click and they drag, and then they wonder why they're not getting a straight line. Okay, if you click and let go, that's how you get straight lines. And you hold Shift key down if you want it to be fixed at a 90 or a 45 degree angle. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick look at how you would model something like a wine glass or something uh, similar in uh, using the line tool, okay? And we're going to use a lathe modifier to do that and just use the line modeling. So basically what um, what you can do with the line modifier is draw one half of a shape, so you're only drawing half of it, and then you would rotate that shape around the center axis 360 times to create a solid object, okay? Now Initially, say for example you were just making a wire for your game or something like that, so you've got like a wire hanging down from the ceiling or something like that. Okay, here's my wire. Now, when I render that with F9, it doesn't show up, okay? That's because this is 2D geometry. It doesn't actually exist. There's no physical properties to it, okay? If you want just this line to render, you can come into the render settings here. So I'm still in the spline settings. If you've clicked off of it by accident, just come into the modify tab. Rendering at the top. And the first two options you've got are enabling renderer, enabling viewport. And they do what exactly what they sound like they do. Enabling renderer means that this line will be able to see it in the renderer. Enabling viewport means I'll be able to see it in the viewport. Okay, so what that's done, if I zoom in, is it's given it some physical geometry, okay? So it's actually renderable. Now if I press F9, we can start to see the shape. And we can edit this shape if we wish. Now, the first one I'm going to go to is under interpolation and steps. This is the amount of detail. Okay, and you can see as I'm adding it up, this curve here is rounding off because it's adding more segments. But if I press 7, um, okay, my colleague knows not going to show because I don't know object just yet. Okay, but it's going to add more and more detail to my scene. Basically, do I need that amount of detail? It's trying to minimize, minimize the effort for the amount of detail I need. Okay, so keep it as low a poly as you can afford, but I want that rounded corner. And I've got what's called a radial line, circular where I've got a rectangular, so I can make that sort of a, a boxy shape, if you like. So if I turn on rectangular, I can up my length, width, um, and change those right up, and you get an idea of what I'm doing here, okay? So you can see that shape becomes rectangular, it becomes a box. Similarly, I can come up to radial, up my radial thickness, okay, and I get this sort of pipe shape sides and you can see around there it makes it a lot smoother but as I said before it's best to try and keep it as low as you can physically get away with you know, something like 12 would be quite smooth but just for example I'm going to show you I'm going to show you with a um, eight sides okay so that's quite straightforward that's that's uh, making a line renderable and now I could draw something out with that and so on and so forth what if I want to make an outline of a shape and I want to make it um, into a physical object so I've drawn around a shape oh, must remember to turn those off. As a tip, never draw in perspective viewport because you never actually get what you think you're seeing. See, all the lines sort of go a bit skew with and it's all very confusing. So always try and draw in either top left or front view. So say for example, I'm drawing myself, I don't know, a shape in front view using the line tool. Uh, that'll do, I'm not really sure what I've made, but hey. Um, I've made myself this shape. now. I could turn it on and make the sides renderable, that's fine, but what if I want to extrude and make this whole shape three-dimensional? Well, if I come up to modifier, click on the drop-down, and choose extrude, extrude modifier, and you can see if I ramp that volume up, 
and its physical shape using just the outline of the line and that took a couple of seconds to do so you could draw around the outline of a shape and you can draw yourself an object okay so we're getting used to how the line tool works the main thing I would like to show you is how we model something say like a wine glass okay and what I mean by that if those of you aren't familiar let's just have a look at sort of the shape I'm gonna go for okay this kind of wine glass image here is exactly what I'm sort of looking for okay so we've got we've got <laughs> a perfectly round shape if you imagine say like a coke can there's no um, grooves no uh, bits cut out of either side that is perfectly sort of um, cylindrical okay so it's equal all the way around so if I was to rotate that it looks the same if I was like like an orange if I was to cut a segment out of that it would look the same all the way around okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the outline of the shape all the way to here and I'm only gonna draw half of it okay because I'm gonna save myself some effort so it's up to you you can uh, bring this in as a reference image if you really wish uh, and actually would do that that would be quite a good activity to show you as well remembering setting up reference images so all I'm going to do is I'm going to save this in a textures file I'll just save this wine glass for now okay that's saved I'm going to put a plane in my scene sorry I'm doing this on the fly but hopefully you'll find this useful I'm going to put a plane in my scene I always just by habit change this to one if I'm not going to need it for modeling uh, I might move it into the center so remember you've got these XYZ axes here so it will move around that center point so the center point of that plane is bang smack in the middle of your grid um, you can move it up or down if you wish or change that pivot point but for me that's fine now I'm going to hit M on my keyboard bring up material editor and I'm just going to add that picture so I'll go to diffuse I'll click the little none box bitmap and I'm going to add my texture on that texture, add that, click and drag, or click apply, show shaded material and viewport, wonderful, okay, that's about right, proportions don't seem too warped, that'll do for me, okay, close that, and this viewport, because I can't see it, because I'm still in wireframe mode, right click on wireframe, change it to shaded, there you go, I've got the outline of my wine glass, so I shouldn't be able to go too far wrong. Alright, I'm going to press G and turn that grid off. Now I can see a little bit better. So, using the line tool again, so we're still in splines, and we're still under the shapes menu. I'm just going to start drawing my spline. Zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to start, I'm going to say roughly about there in the middle. And click and drag to make a curve there okay and if you click and drag like I'm doing there you see whoop, whoop, it's a bit hard because you lose it on the white background but you can see I'm making a bendy curve there right I might zoom out a little bit if you press I on your keyboard where you're drawing a line I will focus your viewport to wherever your mouse is it's a good keyboard shortcut okay let's zoom in there oops I'm going to put one now it's very important when you're drawing a line the second you click off of your line it will stop drawing and you'll have to start again it's very hard to add to a line there are ways of doing it but it's not the easiest so just get your line finished if you add, have to add points or edit it afterwards then that's far easier than starting again basically I probably didn't need that point there let's see if I come back and delete that if I need to uh, it's best to not put too many lines in because then the shape becomes a bit distorted. You might think, oh, I'm drawing this perfectly, this works wonderfully. And then you have a look at it at the end and you realise you put far too many points and it's not straight. Now, that line there isn't particularly straight, so I'm going to come in into my line in the modifier, vertex, or I could have just clicked on vertex here. And I think I'm just going to move that across. For the sake of this, I'm just going to right click and hide my thing in the background so you can start to see my reference image so you can start to see what my uh, the outline of my shape actually looks like. Now, I'm just going to do this bit by eye. Okay, make sure I get that line straight. Uh, to be fair, I don't really feel like I need that, so I'm going to uh, just going to yeah, right, refine if you want to add some more points. Okay, uh, I'm just going to delete that one point there because I don't feel I needed it. Now, what you should hopefully notice 
is the essence of what makes a wine glass. Now, all we've done there is the outline, but what is the purpose of a wine glass? Well, it's to fill it with wine. Now, the problem would be, if I was to rotate this 360 degrees, you would notice that this is solid, it's a physical shape. There's nowhere to put the wine. Now, let me demonstrate that, okay? So, basically, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add well make this into a three-dimensional object now the modifier that we need is called a lathe modifier so if you click on the drop down you choose lathe modifier now what basically lathe does is it rotates 360 degrees around a center point the problem you're probably seeing here is that that center point isn't in the center that should be right on the center line okay and that's why we're getting this shape that looks nothing like a wine glass so if I click on the plus click on axis I'm going to turn the light bulb off so I can actually see it Move that center line right into the middle of my wine glass. Turn it back on. And there we go. You've got yourself a wine glass. Now, looks all well and good from this angle. Um, and I'm quite happy with it. You could change the segments up, make it a bit smoother. Uh, sort of working for me. But the one big issue for a wine glass is that we can't put any wine in it. Okay? So you need to remember anything when we're modeling that goes all the way to this line is going to be solid. Anything that doesn't reach that line, well, it's going to be a hollow, isn't it? So I need to create sort of a gap shape here. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing it. I could just redraw it, but I'm far too lazy right at this moment in time to do that. So what I'm going to do for you to demonstrate is use my refine tool. I'm going to click here to add a new point. Uh, I will need another point in a minute, but let's demonstrate. I'm going to move this here. There, okay, let's find where it is. Might need that across a fraction. Don't want to lose that straight line. There we go. Now I'm going to need probably another two points. So I've added a point here. Now, what I really want to show you is if you, at the moment, this is what is called a corner point. Okay, so it's just it's a 90 degree or straight angle basically. If I wanted to make that into sort of a, a rounded corner. I can make it smooth, but you can see that doesn't do anything at the moment. So if I change it to a Bezier corner, I now have the opportunity to change to a Bezier. So I'm going to move that there. I reckon I can get away in doing this in one point, you know, just for the sake of this. That's fine. And now if I move that something like that, I can click and drag on these angles and I can change the angles at which both those points move at. Now, realistically, I probably needed two points, one there, one there. Hey, I reckon that'll do for now. So I turn my lathe back on. I've got myself a wine glass, all right? You can add yourself a nice glass texture to that, a nice two-sided glass texture. Uh, apply it. You've got yourself a nice wine glass, okay? Now, the key thing to remember about spline modeling, if you're going to use the lathe modifier, is this axis line here, okay? That axis point is vital. Anything that touches it will be a solid. Anything that doesn't, like this, that's going to be a gap. But this solid shape here is going to rotate around this center line 360 times. Okay, like 360 degrees basically. Imagine, imagine when you've got an orange segment, uh, when you cut your oranges up when you eat them at home, and you divide them into, what, you cut them into fours or something like that, you quarter them. Imagine doing that, but imagine you've created one slice and you want to stick all those slices together to make the object solid again. That's the way to think about it when we come down to spline modeling. Okay, so that's just simply a few ways of using the line tool to make yourself three-dimensional models, okay? I hope this has been helpful. Again, if there's any uh, any further advice I can give you or anything like that, my email address is in the, the information at the bottom. I'll try and leave a quote, or I'll try and get back to you and give you any help that I can. Again, this is just sort of a basic introduction. Uh, eventually, I do want to go into some more sort of sophisticated things and, and maybe looking into these in a little bit more detail. But for now, I just want to give you all an insight at a basic level, okay? Hope you uh, enjoyed this. Thanks very much.